Are you live? We are now. Hello, everyone. Thank you once again for joining the Fantastic Duo. I'm Jennifer Callender, based here in Atlanta, Georgia, and my dynamic duo, Tony Harris Taylor in Houston, Texas. So we have come to you once again. We're going to bring you a lively, energetic topic around franchising, but we're going to look specifically at you know, the number of people that are retiring from corporate or exiting corporate for various reasons. So we wanted to tap into that a little bit. So we want to find out, you know, do you have a plan for, for exiting corporate? What's your next step? What are your thoughts around um, taking that journey? We have an awesome, awesome guest here to join us, Mr. Daryl Bennett. I came across Daryl because we've done a engaging event, if you will, for the International Career and Business Alliance. He is a very motivational speaker. He is a dynamic person in his own right. You will come to know that really quickly. Um, he is a, a all things uh, franchising and wanting to build wealth within the Black community. So I wanted to bring him forward so you can specifically hear some of the things he has to share. So let us uh, bring Daryl, Mr. Daryl Bennett to the stage. Hi, Daryl. Hey, how's everybody? Thanks, Jennifer and Tony. Thanks for having me. Thanks no. for being here. Now, Thanks where do you live, Daryl? Yes. Right. You can hear me clearly, right? Yes. yes, we can hear you. So it's great to, to, to talk to everyone. My name is Daryl Bennett. I'll be really quick just to say a little bit about myself. Originally, I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Quick nugget, one of the first books I ever read was Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun by Reginald Lewis. Uh, that, that is a theme that has played throughout my life. Um, graduated from Morehouse College in uh, 2007, and then right afterwards, I graduated from Harvard Law School. Now, when I was at Harvard was when life brought me full circle, and I saw Reginald Lewis's picture, and I was reminded of that book, you know, which was to me a mantra. And that's really why I'm here. You know, I, I started a company called BSG Global a few years ago. And we're focused on mentorship and leadership development uh, because we believe that wealth doesn't have to be assigned in one or isolated communities. We believe that it's for us, it's meant for us, and there are ways that we walk people along personal paths in order to build generational wealth. So franchising is one of many ways that we'd love to, to interface with people on for that. Oh. So, so that's that's very exciting. So thank you for that. Um, and you're hitting the ball rolling here with that awesome introduction. So Daryl, what are your thoughts around, um, you know, franchising and this whole world of franchising and what it could offer uh, the specifically the black community as far as getting them into business ownership? That's a great question, Jennifer. So the first thing that I think it gives is a blueprint. You know, I think many times in our communities, we have a saying called, you know, I like to pull myself up by my own bootstraps. Yeah. <laughs> look, look, uh, so, for some of us, we don't have bootstraps, but for others who had the bootstraps, you still have to stand on a, on, on a foundation. And I'll give you another quote, which I think is more powerful. It's Dr. King. Uh, if I've seen further than others, it's because I stand on the shoulders of giants. And so one of the things that we like about franchising is it allows the opportunity for people to have an idea and have a ready-made foundation that they can walk into. Um, if you have an idea, but you need a blueprint, you know, franchising is a phenomenal way to, to begin to build generational wealth. The second thing is it's a ready-made community uh, that it kind of brings you in. You know, anybody that's an entrepreneur, and I see you shaking your head, Tony, Anybody that's ever been in the entrepreneur journey, it's lonely, it's stressful, it's frustrating, you get depressed, you don't know what's going on at times, you wonder, is, am I doing the right thing? You know, <laughs> did I wake up and bump my head? Did I miss my phone? <laughs> and so having that support, that ingrained support, community of people, you know, I had a mentor that said, go uh, pick somebody going where you're going and you'll get me a twice as fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so part of what the franchising community does is it helps people. So let me make this specific for someone. Someone's listening and you might say, I have a skill. I don't know what franchising means for me. Maybe that skill is 
um, uh, plumbing, right? Because one of the things that I think people that are listening to this should understand, franchising is much larger than the traditional storefronts that we tend to think of, the restaurant mm-hmm. storefronts. There's over 300 industries, some are home-based, some are seasonal-based, I mean, uh, pet care, everything that you can think of. So let's say you're at home and you're wondering, I have a, a, a skill and I'm good with plumbing, I've done work with plumbing before. Well, there are franchises, right, where you can get connected with, meaning you have the skill, they will help you with that skill to build a structure around it, to figure out, you know, what does that blueprint look like? What is the structure of your business? Where is it going to be located? Do you need a physical building? Maybe you don't. How you can sort of manage that process and walk you through through a community in order to come to manifestation. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I always express that as the benefit to franchising. So if we think about our topic for today, Mm -hmm. you know, the great resignation, right? Resignation. And the plan for that. So I I recently exited corporate. So Mm -hmm. I can really kind of talk from my experience there, you know, knowing that that early retirement target was on my radar, like a, like a, you know, I was laser focused. Uh Um, And then, you know, wanting to understand what those steps needed to be to make sure I was ready. It was a scary time, but I knew that I wanted to take that step and and I wanted to bet on me. Mm -hmm. Right. So what would be your advice for someone that's kind of really kind of in that space of corporate environment, entertaining, taking that leap, but just don't know where to start? Do it afraid. That's what John Kennedy said. Um, I didn't hear him say that. I'm, I'm, I'm reporting here. Uh, the great resignation, and thanks, Jennifer, for bringing that up. I think what is happening, you know, I think I heard quoted something like 3.4 million people exited the workforce in December of 2021. I think what people are doing is exiting the traditional workforce and they are entering a different phase of discovery within themselves. I think mm. that's what's happening. I think people are moving from outside work to inner purpose. This is where we were meant to be all along. Mm. And when I graduated from uh, law school, I immediately recognized, wait a minute, something's wrong. I cannot spend my life in corporate law. It's no shade to people that do that. It's a great career for folks who are called to do that. But I know that there's a lot of people who are listening to us. They have um, a dream, a goal. In some cases, you work towards something and you look up and you may be making some money, you may be doing well professionally, but it's like, how did I get here? <laughs> you know, um, money buys comfort, but it does not bring fulfillment. And that's, that's, that's a fact. Mm, I and love so, that. You know, we, and there's a way to have both. There's a way to have both. Um, I think the first step is to recognize that, um, if I could step back a, a second, Jennifer, and, and just say, it's a reason why you have the dream. I want to start with that, right? Mm-hmm. So before we even get into the fact that you got to do it afraid, that you got to do it scared, that you got to do it maybe a little bit unshaky or not unsure, the reason why you have to is because that thing's been all inside of you since you were born. Some of you are listening to me and the dream just won't die. You went to school and, you know, maybe for some of you, you went to school when you went to school for a major for someone else, right? Your, your parent told you to, to get that major because that would make you money, whatever. You did that. Now you're wondering, how do I live for what's on the inside of me? Mm. I want to tell you the reason why the dream won't die is because it's been put on you into you from something far bigger, and it's to release something for your community and for your world. So you, you got to understand that because when it gets tough, and it will, <laughs> it's your why is going to push you through. Mm. Can I say something on that? Go ahead, Tony. Go ahead. <laughs> so my, so, in, and many people who follow me have heard this story and I will not stop telling it because when I got clear on my why, the how showed up. It mm. had to be in the form of a franchise. What's really interesting about that is When I stated my why to my coach, she asked me, why don't you start your own networking group? And I said, I didn't have this. I don't have that. I don't. 
everything I said I didn't have, the franchise showed up one week later and filled the, the void that I said I did not have. And so what I really work with my clients on in my coaching business is really getting clear on what is your why. Why? What gets you up every day that you would do for free, but you can get paid for it. And, you know, I'm I'm just excited to hear you say that we are on the same page. Yeah. Because once you know your why, then you can look at a franchise to, because it's there, by the way, the franchise, I didn't even know there was all these thousands of brands out there. So right. thank you, Daryl, for that. The why is you got to get clear on that first and then everything else will show up. Yeah. Well, so are we saying that the why then is the driver? Mm -hmm. I think that's what we're saying. Yeah. I mean, Dominic Sinek wrote a book, Start With Why. Yeah. You know? with yeah. It's it's the why because yeah and, and I hear what you're saying Tony the how is is is, is great and the, and the and the what is will come together but if if you don't have that why and I think that's sometimes what happens you know we don't I heard somebody say you know you need motivation no you don't need motivation you need insight right mm -hmm. because I don't believe all of us are lazy and all of us are motivated. Right? We're all motivated for what we want and we're all lazy for things we don't want to do. So when I find people that are unmotivated, it's not it's so much an intrinsic problem that they're born with. We haven't touched that place of excitement, fulfillment, for what you're saying, Tony, what am I going to do for free? I'm sure y'all get the sense. I do mentorship and leadership development for free. Y'all don't have to pay me nothing to push you to your next dimension, right? That's what mm -hmm. I do, right? I mean, there is a cost to it, but that's a whole thing. <laughs> right? but of I, course. <laughs> I enjoy it. I, I, I thoroughly love seeing people move to that next level. And so, and, and if I could just button it here by saying, so people don't, and I, and I know people are here and thinking this is, this is esoteric. What you heard attorney say is when she got clear on the why, the other thing showed up. It showed up. Right. Yeah. So that's what, that's, that's, that's Jennifer to that, to that start. So what is your why? What is the reason? That would be the way that I would start. Here's the other thing. Too many times we are operating on what we already know. See, you don't know what you don't know. Oh, I didn't know that this, this franchise existed. That's good. I put it out. I'm a faith lady, so I prayed about it. And then what I didn't even know showed up. So don't enter it with what you already know. That's why you need to meet with Jennifer, because she can tell you what you don't know about starting a franchise finding right. one for you there's brands out there you ain't never heard of and they're very successful that's a great point because i think that leads me to the next point so so we know you know that there are narratives out there about franchising right yes whatever they may be mm -hmm. so let's 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 uh, unravel that a little bit. A so, Daryl, can you talk about you know the myths around franchising? You need a lot of money. Let's start with that. <laughs> you need fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. To get started, fifty thousand, and you know, in, a, in an escrow account, it, it's not true. Now, for some franchises and some brands, in certain circumstances, in some regions, yes, but that is not the case for the large majority. Um, like, you know, I already said, there's over 300 some brands, uh, excuse me, 300 some industries, excuse me, and thousands of brands. You have everything from vending machines. I have a friend who's 22 years old in Long Island. Actually, he's one of my mentees and he owns vending machines. He is a franchisee in Long Island. All right. It's that simple. And he started with a thousand dollars right where he was. I love it. And when with my situation, there was a forty thousand dollar price tag, which really, in the scheme of things, isn't that big of a number, right? But when the um, franchisor met, I didn't have forty thousand dollars down. I didn't have it. And when he met me, he liked me. He said, "How much do you have?" I had this much of the big number. Absolutely. 
He said, girl, I'll take it. And he gave me interest free, no credit check financing. And not just me, other people. He's done it for a lot of the franchisees. Because the relationship was established. Again, you don't know what you don't know. And it's still relationship. The other thing is most of those, a lot of these brands are mom and prop small brands. They're trying to grow That's too. Right. So they're going to make the concessions they need to make to get people into their network. So don't Tony, be- I always love that story. I love your story because I think sometimes we talk ourselves out of getting started before we get started, which is unfortunate. Um, And what I'm seeing is, you know, I'm seeing that in this climate, in this day and age, in my meetings with franchisors, they are thirsty to meet with us. They are thirsty to speak to us. So when we, listen to those narratives that we have going on in our head, we automatically take ourselves out of the equation before we can even get started because you don't know how that franchisor is willing to meet you where you are. Can I go close to any to say, Jennifer, I would dare to say from the franchisors that I know, they want to build their business probably more than you want to build yours. I'm going to tell you why. You're probably just getting started if we're listening, if you're listening to me. If they're a franchise or they've been doing it, right? They are <laughs> they are super interested in finding the right people who are going to represent them, putting the right people together with the right financial folks. That's the whole other thing, right? That's they're right. In this process, that all they do is provide the capital. Okay, because what I hear Tony saying is, I'm going to translate this into my to my language. Leave that to your own understanding, right? Because see, you don't know what you don't know. You don't know where all the money is. You don't know that there are people that, that, that they've been waiting. We're, we're working with folks. This whole program's in place where all they got to get is the right person, and they'll connect you with the person to say, we'll get the capital. That That's taken care of. We'll get the building if that's needed. We'll get you the staff. We just need you to be on. But that kind of goes back to the to the to the start of what's my why? Am I clear on and and, and that's kind of if, if I could say this too, what is my value output, right? So if we start with with because I want to go back to your question, Jennifer, about the driver. If the driver's money is not gonna work, I'm just gonna tell you that now. Then you can make a great impact and make phenomenal wealth. That's that's but it starts with the impact, right? It doesn't yeah. start with let me look at a grid where I cannot make the most money and all that. You, you don't, you, grandma would say, put the heart, court, heart, cart before the horse, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> I want you to think of where am I best positioned to make the most amount of impact? Mm-hmm. And once I come mm-hmm. to that place, mm-hmm. the, the people that you need to build impact in that place, whether it's franchising or elsewhere, I know we're going to talk about franchise, which I get one more. Or else, whatever it is, back in the place. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. Girl, I didn't catch. Where do you live? I'm in New York. You live in New York now. I'm in New York, yes. Uh, but we are we're pretty we're pretty mobile. So we we've been around and of course anybody that's interested in, in working with us, you know, we have virtual services. Um, but this is an exciting conversation because more and more people. Uh, I'm glad to see that look like us are are understanding. And like you said, Jennifer, they're breaking down those narratives. That's right. That's right. So so if you're out there in the audience and you have a question, please post it in the comment section. We're here with Mr. Daryl Bennett. He is dropping nuggets. (laughs) And um, so let's shift a little bit. So if we thought about with our, with, you know, I like talking about our community. So if we thought about our community, what is the thing that you, that they don't know that you wish that they knew about franchising? I kind of want to hit back the point we just came off of, which is they probably want you more than, more than you know. Right. Yeah. They need you. Yeah. They need yeah. you, right? 
Um, I think sometimes, unfortunately, we've been taught, now I wanna be too presumptuous here, I know I've struggled with this, but we've been taught in our communities to kind of come in from a subservient look. I'm just, mm. I'm, here. I'm glad to be at the table, and I'm just happy and grateful to be here. Yes, I'm happy and grateful to be here, but there's, <laughs> yes, I'm happy and grateful to be here, but there's a need that you have that I'm meeting, right? This is not about, you know, even when I work with folks, but it's not about right. or this isn't this isn't charity work. I say this respectfully. This is they have a need, you have a skill, you have a service, you have a relationship, you have a connection to a community. You have a connection to a community. I want to say that again. You have a connection to a community. They can't necessarily reach the people you can reach. That's right. There's someone on in your city, in your neighborhood, in your community that you have influence over, you're an influencer, and they want that. So I think when you understand the power of that, you step back and you think, okay, how do I wanna make my mark in the world and how do I partner? This is the word I wanna use, partner. It gets us out of that thinking of subservience. How do I partner my skills, my gifts, my talents, the, the my, my spirit, right? The energy that I bring to what you have so that way we can we can do something great. Love it. I love that. I think Jennifer's in control of the. Let me see if I can get us back there. We yeah. Go. There we go. Okay. I I love that. They want us, right? And they want all minorities really because they don't know how to reach us, and so we should enter the room saying, "Here we are," mm-hmm. you know. We are here to help you as much as you're here to help us. And um, and I will tell you, even in my franchise, there's very few um, brown people. And, um, you know, I brought a few to the table and I continue to bring, I bring everybody, but I really continue to look for other people that look like us mm-hmm. to give them the opportunity to do something great now, the other thing is, you know, I want to go back to the money just for a second, because you're going to spend the money regardless. You're going to spend the money you would invest in a franchise regardless. People think because they're starting a business, it's I'm it's free. Yeah, no, you're going to spend a lot on a brand, on colors, on logos, on marketing materials which the franchise already has for you. So, um, you know, the money, don't worry about the money. Enter the conversation and the money will come um, and you'll be amazed with that. Um, Daryl, um, as we, go ahead. No, I said I love that. I was just saying I love that. Okay, very good. So, Jennifer, did you have another question for Daryl? If not, I No, go ahead. Go ahead, Tony. <laughs> So, Daryl, let's talk to the younger generation. Okay. Okay. Um, I know black don't crack, so but you've got a lot of experience. So I'm thinking you're still a younger generation, <laughs> younger than us, but I think you've had some experience along the way. We know that the younger generation doesn't even think about going to corporate. A lot of them are like, and then when they get there, <laughs> like, uh, I didn't sign up for this. Yes. Exit quickly. So yes. let's talk to that generation about the legacy they could build with franchising. I love that. Um, so as millennials, you know, I think we really took the torch of just saying, you know what? If it's not about fulfillment, I don't think I can do it. But Generation Z, I think that's what it's called, Generation Z right behind. They, they have, I'm just so proud of them. I and mean, one of the things that I've read, they said that their, their, their generation is the first to leave a job because of money. Excuse me, to, to take a job because of salary, but to leave a job because of fulfillment. Mm. That, that's deep. They'll take, they'll take it because you're offering them the right money, right? Mm-hmm. But then they'll leave because... I'm not doing anything great. I thought I was going to do something great. I knew I, I know your company's name, but what am I doing here? And I think where we are, we're in a place where people want to be a part of something. You know, I, the, y'all know the old Little Mermaid song. I want to be where the people are. Right? <laughs> I 
serious. I'm serious. I think that's where folks are. And I want to speak to people who are listening to me and or listen to us. And let's let's say yeah, you're in that generation Z. Maybe you're a millennial like you know, like me, and you're you're still trying to wonder what what's next. The first thing is this is a ripe opportunity. Um, it is. You know, employers are baffled. Traditional employers are baffled. I mean, I'm having conversations with them all the time. And, you know, many of them are angry because it's caused significant turnover. It's all types of costs in the labor industry. But I think it's good. I think it's good for the workforce that it's been such a disruption mm-hmm. that people feel empowered mm-hmm. to say, you know, I'm here, but I'm not being respected. Or I'm here and this isn't a good place for me. I'm here and... I don't feel like my voice is being heard, right? So, you know, what do you do with that? You have to balance it because you got to make a living. I, I do want to say that. If you leave with your feelings, you'll be broke at home and by yourself. So you you can't just leave the job all the time. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, but I think harnessing the opportunity where we are now between the gig economy, between the many opportunities there are to be a 1040 uh, uh, what do you call it, a 1099 employee or a, a consultant, franchising. There's so many different ways that right where you are, you can leverage those those skills. So what I would say is this is an exciting time. Um, I, I would, I would of course, you know, this is, mentorship is a big point. Mm-hmm. And you, you said something, I'm Tony, when you say you're going to spend the money anyway. Uh, you you'll probably spend more money, time, and effort when you don't have the guidance. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why I'm on this call, one of the reasons why I created BSG Global, um, and one of the reasons why I'm really passionate about what we do as a company is that I've seen this lived out in my own life. When a person has a blueprint, when a person has a guide, when someone has someone walking them through the journey of life, things are easier, they're simpler, and they're able to succeed more. Um, and that's what we're talking about with franchising, putting people into ready-made communities that help them along the way. That's so right. The energy is great, being young and having an energy in it. But this is what I can tell you from several years of burnout that I faced. If you do not have the right guidance, if you don't have the right mentorship, if you don't have the people that are in your ear that's been there, that's been there. I'm not talking about Pookie Ray Ray and them. They may love you, but they may not have been there. Ah. I'm really in this season because when I left Baltimore, love my people, but I realized for me to go somewhere else, I couldn't lean on the understanding that I had from before. Mm. So I think we underestimate, and this is where I'll end on this because I don't want to. I think we think because so much is on YouTube and there's so much information Mm -hmm. and I can watch a YouTube video and get it. But I'm going to tell you something for you to get to the next level. It's not going to be information. It's going to be insight. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to get that on YouTube. It's going to take somebody that's going to walk alongside you. Mm -hmm. I would encourage you as you're listening that we all need people that are taking us to the next level. Um, And that's going to be the key, whether it's in franchising and business or just in life in general. And, and, and Tony, I, Daryl, what you just shared is amazing. Now, when we think about, um, when I think about the younger generation, I think about tapping into the HBCUs. Mm-hmm. Um, when, and I, I'm a graduate of an HBCU. The only thing, not the only thing, I shouldn't say that, but one of the things that I had coming out of and HBCU were companies presenting us with credit cards mm-hmm. that we could take advantage of mm-hmm. with high interest rates, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we, you know, that mentality where you thought, oh, this is a credit card, I get a credit card. But little did you know that these were interest rates that you're paying more on interest than you would even, you know, whatever items you were buying with the credit card, right? Wow. So, so, you know, you talk about predatory lending. I think that that's a form of predatory credit, if you sure will. You're starting behind before you even start ahead. Sure. Um, so those are the things that I go to when I think about our young folks. And I think that, you know, they're, they're in a place where they just have so much boldness. 
Mm. Um, things that, you know, to entertain a question like, or entertain the, the notion that I don't want to go to corporate when I graduate, I want my own thing. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom and dad were, were pushing corporate. Mm -hmm. I never thought, okay, graduating from college, I'm, I'm going to get my own thing. So, so it's a shift that's happening now. Absolutely. That we are uh, uh, responsible for tapping into. Yep. And um, I think that's my why. That's my driver. So, so I think this is a great conversation. Um, I see a lot of comments in the chat from Walker Agency. Okay. Um, <laughs> good point. I don't like credit cards. Gold nuggets. She mm -hmm. said she was fooled. Wow. So there's a so so this is a great conversation that we're having. I think, you know, it's information that needs to be shared. Um, we're gonna chip. Tony and I, we are in agreement that we're gonna chip away at the narrative that's out there around franchising yeah. because we understand the power. And Dara, we're so elated to have you here, and I know you understand it as well. Absolutely. And I, if I could, I wanted to expand on one of the point where, points where you talked about, um, you know, working in your own business, right? That's something that they have been teaching their children. When I say they, I mean those yeah. in college instructors. And, and let me tell you what I learned. Growing up, I felt like I'd always been told to work for the big bank or not the big corporation. You know, you yeah. get your name there. Now, when I went to Harvard, this was something that I started noticing. The sons and daughters of powerful families, they went and worked for their families. Mm. They got these massive degrees from these big name schools, and they thought it not robbery to go and work for their families. Mm. Right? Whereas in our communities, right, we was, you at Harvard, you at Yale. I'm now speaking about the whole Ivy League community as people were kind of talk, And it's like, well, I can't go in back and work for uncle such and such and so. Because what would that look like on my resume? Mm. And so you had so many people in this push, right, to go and work for the Morgan Stanley's, the Lehman Brothers, all that. And what is amazing is I graduated from Morehouse College in 2007 and Harvard in, 2000, in law school in 2010. And this is why this is important. 2008 was the year of the major recession. Mm. There were people's whole livelihood, excuse me, excuse me entire dreams to work for Lehman Brothers. They graduated in 2007. Yeah. When I went 40% for business majors. There were a lot of friends I had at Lehman Brothers. You know the end of that story, right? Yes. And think what that did. And I had friends, they found out that they were no persona non grata because their key card didn't work when they went in the next mm. day. So, just as, so what it was, was it was a whole shifting, I think, where people begin to say, wait a minute, maybe it's not bad to use everything I have and put it into the relationships of people that I already know, whether that's yeah. working for my own business, you don't, you know, it's in my own living room, it's in my own backyard. And that I think gave rise to the YouTube creator, right? That's sitting on his or her couch, right? Creating multi-million dollar video, you know, right. as, as a multi-million dollar career. So I'm saying all that to say, believe in the power of your own dreams. I think we, along the way, somehow we, we think that, you know, everything else is better than us. The grass mm. is always green on the side. There's something special about you. Like, I love know, that. <laughs> every great business started right in somebody's head, right? That's every right. great company, every great brand. So That's right. Don't be so quick to, I, I, heard, I heard someone say this, build your own dreams or somebody else will hire you to build theirs, right? right. Don't be so quick to give up on your own dreams, realizing that even if you are working for someone and it's good for a season, that's still someone's dream. That's right. right. You might as well be working on your own family legacy. That's exactly. right. That's the other thing, franchises, franchising does allow you to create a business that's a legacy, can be passed on or sold. How many people create their businesses? Let's keep it real, especially in our community from scratch and then are able to liquidate it and sell it when they're ready to get out of it. But a franchise is easier to move out because it's part of a system. 
Mm. And that's another show because we're out of time for yeah, this show. That's a whole nother. That's so what you're talking about, you know what you're getting into, Tony? You're getting into rich dad, poor dad, the four quadrants. And how if you're not careful, you become a slave to your own business. That's a whole other thing. That's what you're so excited to start a business. And now that thing has locked you in. That's and right. it, mm. The whole point of the business, the franchise, whatever the vehicle is, is to allow the freedom for you to live. Yeah. It's enough for you to be chained. So now you went from chain to their desk to chain to this desk. Mm. That's, you're right. That's, well, another Darryl, we, that's another show. It's a whole nother show. <laughs> but Daryl, you have been amazing. Amazing. Applause. Mm. I appreciate your energy, your insights. Your um and your drive, and I will be reaching out to you so we can do a one to one, so I can find out who I can connect you to, so that you can uh, further your business. And um, thank you so much, Jennifer. You have any parting words? Because I want us to. Yeah, call. I would just offer to our to our audience, please, please, please connect with Daryl Bennett on LinkedIn. Um, he is doing wonderful things, and Daryl, I am. You know, I'm a huge. Huge, huge, huge Daryl fan. So we, um, I think I can speak for Tony in saying this. We will have you back on the show for sure. Thank you for having me. What's your um, website just so that people can find you online? You can find me at DarylBennett.com. That's D-A-R-R-E-L-L-D-E-N-E-T-T. -E -E <laughs> I, I, I got that. I heard that. Aura, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Daryl Bennett, I'll be in touch. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, we're going to give you some departing thoughts, Jennifer and I. So stay with us, Daryl, in the background. Okay, Jennifer. Yay. Good job on bringing our first amazing guest. I know. I know. I love Daryl. And that's just the caliber of guests that we will have on the Frantastic Duo sessions every Saturday at one. So please, please, please stay connected with us. And Tony, I want to talk about just shift to some of the some of the events that we have, you and I, we have on our plate coming up. Um, so you want to take you want to talk a little bit about that? So every Saturday we'll be here at noon central, 1 p.m. So that's a weekly event. You can tune in or watch us later. If you're watching us on replay, put hashtag replay. Any subjects you want to hear from us, please put that in the comments because we are reviewing and we will find the experts to cover those subjects. Um, February 25th through March 1st, we are going to the International Franchise Association Conference. And we're super excited about that. So we'll be bringing you new people from that conference as well. Um, what else do we have, Jennifer? So we have the Power Networking Conference. Mm -hmm. In August. In August. That's but the conference we... by Dr. George Frazier. And Tony and I will be speaking on uh, embarking on a new journey through franchising. Absolutely. So we will be dropping some information on how you can attend the conference as well. And that's coming up. Uh, we will have that on one of the upcoming shows. And that we'll probably have Dr. Frazier on the show. And yes. uh, it's in my hometown, Houston, Texas. Houston, so Texas. Road trip for me. I'm based <laughs> in Atlanta, Georgia, but I'll be going to Houston, Texas. Awesome. So everybody, thank you so much for the opportunity to share with you. And we will see you next Saturday, same bat channel. And uh, we're just looking forward to having some fantastic conversations around uh, franchising. This is Tony Harris Taylor. And this and is Jennifer Callender. We're saying take a drastic step today. Step today. For a, for a fantastic, fantastic tomorrow. tomorrow. Yay! Bye. Bye.